inviting me uh, to talk here. I actually was so good, so I didn't even prepare anything in terms of slides or anything to show you. Uh, so what I will do instead is, is show you a couple of, of the, maybe some of the tools that we use in my team. So I was hoping also by not having a presentation that maybe we can have a bit of a dialogue tonight. And I'm really keen to kind of know what, what you think about some of the things I, I talk about in terms of what we do in our group. Uh, here are some uh, questions or, or thoughts or feedback as I'm discussing. So, so please raise your hand or, or shout it out. I, I, I would love to hear from you immediately rather than say the question towards the end because I always forget, forget the questions at the end of the day. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a Swedish Canadian. Uh, I started off a number of startups, as mentioned in my bio, um, working in Sweden and in Europe, and then I came to Canada, and I started working for the city of Toronto as a programmer, um, and worked there many years at city in online development, and then I worked a little bit in 311. Um, I'm, I'm sort of an integrator and a product developer by trade, meaning I, I like things that connect interfaces, APIs, and so on. Uh, and the word API, of course, has kind of sort of come back and forth a little bit in the tech industry. And I'm going to talk now about how we brought it back into the city over the last little bit in the, our team. So in 2014, I created, uh, or I was, I was hired to, to build a new team called the Common Components Team. And the Common Components Team is a central, uh, initially small unit in the, the uh, city's IT department that will look after sort of common capabilities, uh, common mechanisms that are then embedded in multiple IT solutions throughout the city. And because the city is such a large entity, it can easily otherwise lead to that we kind of duplicate the effort or, or sort of not necessarily optimize the way that we do IT solutions across the board. Um, <coughs> Okay, so that's a little bit about me, and uh, what I'm gonna talk about tonight would be uh, first the common components team, the, the things that we do, so you get a little bit of a picture of, of what it is that we do, more details on that, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we work, uh, some of the new tools or methods and, and kind of uh, ways of working that we're, we're pioneering in the uh, common components team, because uh, I'm, I'm also very excited about sort of new ways of, of doing things. Uh, and uh, with my new role, I was able to kind of influence a little bit more and uh, get the team going on some, some new cool ways of, of doing solutions. So I'm gonna talk about that. And then I thought we could also talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, attempts I said in the, in the, uh, in the uh, notes for tonight of, to try to innovate in the city. It's a large government entity, and sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. You feel like you, you don't really necessarily get a day-to-day -day, uh, opportunity to innovate, so I'm gonna to try to describe a little bit of how we attempt to innovate. Uh, and it's not, it's not necessarily uh, in a you know, derogatory way about the government, but attempting to uh, innovate from a perspective of constantly trying to. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of my ideas in terms of what we could do radically different as, as a government when it comes to uh, interfacing with what's often referred to as the API economy or digital economy. And uh, what, what my thoughts are on the stuff, my, maybe my personal thoughts more so than my official thoughts as a city employee. And I was hoping that we can perhaps have a table conversation uh, after that, I think that's sort of the format of the night, but there's some table conversations and products that start out. So I'll stick around and, and see if someone wants to join me to talk about that. Um, okay, so I'll kick it off and talk a little bit about the Com Components team. So we, we create, uh, since 2014, uh, JSON REST APIs um, that provide external, uh, provided externally for online solutions. Um, so a lot of the solutions that have happened since 2014 and onwards, uh, new city services that have launched, are built on top of our APIs. Um, and those APIs uh, may have similar capability, might have existed before in the city, but it was built usually in Java as, as EJBs, if you're a programmer, you know what that is. 
And we're sort of more legacy type of technologies that was previously used extensively throughout the city. Um, so when we created a new team, we kind of decided to immediately take a slightly different technical direction and, and more of an API type of direction. So we started creating APIs from the get-go. And so we have a number of APIs that are in production now in, in public facing, uh, and those APIs are used for online solutions. And we are also starting to now look at how we're gonna extend the usage of those APIs for mobile solutions, city mobile solutions, um, or community mobile solutions, whatever it may be, as well as looking at using them for sort of integration with other entities, be it community uh, solutions or other levels of government or whatever it may be. Uh, so that is, that is the set of APIs that we have. And then we also have APIs and integration mechanisms that we have set up internally. Now the city has a lot of, of, of internal solutions that we have put in place over the years to manage the various lines of business and they need to share data a little more effectively. And just as much as there's a need to modernize and, and provide more um, modern ways of, of providing online solutions, uh, there's a huge need for internal data sharing and, and process integration inside of the city walls between the different city systems. So uh, those integrations are now starting to be more and more enabled through modern REST-based, JSON-based APIs. And that will that is starting to even now take off a little bit, become a little bit more opportun opportunistic in the way that these APIs are used on the internal side of the front, sharing some of the data between the different divisions. Um, so that is that is uh, sort of in, in a summary of what we what we offer and what we've been building out. Oops, that's a spot to avoid. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, so raise your hand and, and uh, take questions. Um, so that's, so that's what we do. Uh, now some of the examples of that, we have APIs that we, uh, one that we're working on right now, and I might show you some of that in a bit, is an API for uh, extracting data out of the hundreds of different solutions we have inside of the city, and providing it into our BI stack, or providing it to uh, the Open Data team for posting it online. And we have some existing capabilities like this in the city, so it's not necessarily a new solution, but it's a little bit of a modern, modernized version of a previous solution. And um, the way we produce these products, it, we, see, we think of ourselves as an internal software team to the city. We provide internal uh, software solutions that then other IT units, because there's quite a few IT units in the city, uh, that they can pick up and use on their own. So every single one of the APIs are uh, the REST-based, JSON-based, they have API specifications to them, they, and they also come with self-service tools. So the, the tools are there for other development teams internally to utilize to, to get themselves up and running on the APIs. The idea being that they shouldn't have to come to us to figure out how to use the API, something that they can kind of set themselves up on and start utilizing. And that's for purposes of, of scaling it a little bit so that we don't become involved in that in the process. Um, so that's that's a, sort of a key factor to, to the APIs. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to mention around them is that they're, because the city is, is very diverse, we have 45 lines of businesses, many different types of city, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Is it possible? Is it always an outsider? We don't know what the UD has already been done. Kind of like you never know what this is. Like, is there any way you could imagine like documentation for these things being available? Like, oh, we have this thing and it currently exists, and then we just as outsiders we know where the apps or where like things to take on that. Right. Right. So, it repeat the question for sure. Yeah, so, so the question was if, if it would be possible to share kind of like a listing or description of, of those, of, of documentation of those APIs that we have to an external audience. Uh, I don't have a problem with that personally. I think there's quite a bit of information we can share. Um, 
Now, we don't necessarily publish all of that information because those APRs aren't necessarily always available <laughs> immediately externally. Um, but uh, I, I don't see why you couldn't ask for them. And so if you give me your details, I, I can follow up afterwards. Sounds good. Um, yes? Can you give, are there examples of any applications on the public web that are powered by some of the APIs that you could not? For sure. So uh, some examples, yeah, oh sorry. So the uh, question was if there are some external uh, online services that we worked on, um, give some examples of that. So um, we have a, a few different ones that you might have used from revenue services. If you bought a house, you're the lawyer you work with might have used the, uh, the certificate a purchasing service, which is that you can buy a tax and utility certificate from the city. This is a service offered by Revenue Services, uh, which is one of the divisions in the city, and they sell these certificates as a way of guaranteeing like what that there's no liabilities against the house and liens against the house. Um, so that's a service that we launched early recently. It's powered by multiple APIs. It's powered by an API called the Content API, which delivers some of the online content for the solution. It's powered by an API called Service Request API which takes the uh, request from the online form. They, it's an HTML5 form, stateless form, that submits the data to an API that we built and provided to that project. And then that API performs also the integration back to the large city tax system, which is a multi-million dollar back office solution uh, that's not really web enabled. So therefore, we kind of fill that function of an integrator. Um, so that's a solution that is um, uh, quite a high volume. Um, a couple of other ones that along the same lines with revenue services, we did uh, parking tickets lookup. So if you have a parking ticket and you look it up, you actually use our APIs to uh, find out the history of your parking tickets. <laughs> I'm not gonna demo that because we have way too many tickets. Because um, it shows you also the ones that you paid, not just the ones that are outstanding. Um, so that, that was an API that we provided, and uh, along the same line, we've done utility uh, account lookup, tax account lookup, and we also did with Toronto Water a combination, uh, actually from a user experience, it's, it looks like it's one app, but the utility account lookup, and also have a click through link where you can see your water usage to see how much water you use. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but there's a, it graphs it and the whole thing. Uh, it, was, it was plastered around the, the city uh, advertising for a while. Um, and again, that's our APIs. So it's actually a middleware piece that we put in place, um, and it's called the Lookup API. So those are, are a few different examples. Uh, another example that is, is out there right now uh, is the um, Toronto Hotspots. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, and Hot Eats, so there's a kind of a, a, a focus it's, it's a program run by Economic Development, and they, they try to, to bring focus to specific community areas around the, around the city. And uh, again, it's actually using our APIs to, to cache some of the data out of the uh, registered restaurants that are part of the program, and then provide that up to an HTML5 front end that is then providing a pretty kind of a listing of that and searchability and all of that. Another one was, that was recently up was uh, Doors Open. It's another example of it. Um, there's a number of them. We have 40 apps or so that has been created on our APIs publicly uh, since the launch in 2014. Um, so that's a little bit of, of what we do. Uh, we have some heavier type of integration too on our, on our play to enterprise integration, which means that there, when there's a large multi-million dollar software implementation that's coming into the city, then we facilitate the large handshakes between those multi-million dollar systems and other systems. An example of that is the Serum One integration that we did. And the Serum One division has about three or 4,000 service requests that flow from 311 into the various areas of the city into a multitude of backend system, and then provide status on each one of those service requests and so on. So that's the kind of uh, uh, integration that we do. I don't know if I need this right now. Um, okay, so that's a little bit of what we do. Any more questions on that? Any 
Yes, Gabe. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so that's a little bit of, of uh, I guess, the backstory to the team. And, and just to kind of clarify the, the common components thing, the, the idea here is to um, to change a little bit of the practice in the city. Why we got creative was to change a little bit of the practice from one-off business silo solutions to productification. To, to take reusable code assets or frameworks or libraries and pr productify it. And that was a, that's an interesting journey in itself because then you get all this sort of like client relationships that I have internally now with all the other IT units. And it's not the typical way that IT has really been done in the city before. It was more that, you know, that the one business wanted a specific application and then that was built or purchased from, from a software vendor external. So, it's been an interesting journey to work through through with the different other IT units and, and uh, so on. Okay, um, without further ado, then I'm going to talk a little bit about what how we work. Uh, how much time do we have? Are we okay with that? Five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay, so I'll talk a little bit quicker. So, um, when we got started, I quickly realized that we didn't really want to do it exactly the way we've done things before. So, I, uh, I mentioned that we, we switched on to you saying, uh, JSON REST based APIs, that was one major shift. And we also immediately got going on using, uh, yes? What are those? Okay, sure. <laughs> so, um, in, when you do integration uh, between systems, uh, you, you previously there was a sort of a paradigm of using what was called SOAP, which is XML based, which is just a way of transporting data between systems. And it was kind of heavy and Kind of created more and more work for IT workers and using those techniques. And now with with dawn of, of sort of the way the browsers interact with with uh, computer systems, um, a new format came up and it's part of the JavaScript standard you call JSON. And then with that came another paradigm of doing uh, integration over the web protocols and that's called REST, which is RESTful services. I'm sure there's some Coders out in the, in the group here would prefer to define it in a different way, but that's sort of how I think of it. Um, it is a far more lightweight way of doing it. And it, it caters towards rapid, evolving solutions versus more of a static, define it and design it for a year and then build it in two years kind of solutions. Um, so that was one technology shift that we did. We moved to uh, Agile methods and the team kind of uh, evolved, uh, tried different things, uh, tried different methods and uh, different tools when we got started in 2014 and onwards. And we landed on using Scrum for large development activities and uh, using Kanban for more operational type of work that came into the unit. So that's what we use internally. Uh, we landed on a tool called Taiga, which is a really cool tool. I don't know if you tried it. It's a free, uh, sorry, it's an open source tool uh, that now has a freemium option uh, online, so you can actually sign up and, and get your own account for free if you want to give it a shot. Uh, my team really likes it. It's a drag and drop type of environment where, where as long as you have someone doing the, all the pre-work on the user stories and everything else, um, there, it's very quick to use. Um, what I'm gonna show, okay, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit to these methods because I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with them. Oops, sorry. So here's a screen, oops, here's a screen of, out of the tool. Uh, this is a Kanban view. And this specific Kanban is tracking the major projects that we're working on right now. And I go through this with my leads once a week. Normally when you go through and do sort of task reviews in, in Scrum or even in Kanban, you do it a little bit more often. Um, so in the tool here, as we're working through and discussing the status, uh, people are updating it, adding notes individually in, inside of these individual tasks. And then we uh, also move them between the columns move the tweet. So the columns here represent sort of the progress. And typically what you have all the way to the left, I'm not showing here right now, is what's in the backlog, if you will. The things that we gotta get started on, the things that we haven't started yet. 
And in Kanban style, or one of the methods of Kanban is to make sure you don't have too much work in progress. So there's a sort of a sort of load that you can hit in terms of the, how much capacity you have in the team. And if you put too much work in progress at any point in time, then it becomes too uh, onerous on the team to move anything forward. So that's part of one of the principles of Kanban. Uh, so we use Kanban quite extensively for just managing tasks, managing the uh, uh, one-off requests. And uh, we use Scrum, which is more of a, a heavy-duty development method in the same tool. It has, this tool has multiple views. You can, use, you can switch between them. So if you move from initially just managing your tasks and your requirements through Kanban, you can actually switch it into adding it formally into sprints, which is sort of a short duration of heavy active development where you work towards a uh, most valuable product. And I think there's a few of you talk to someone here who, who works towards the most valuable product right now. Uh, and it's a typical, uh, it's the typical agile development method today. So we adopted that and we used that extensively. And now we're working on as the next stage to more bring that out to lines of business uh, or more multifaceted uh, teams and in other projects. So that's what we're after that. And it's still a journey, like the team never did this before 2014. So we're all learning it. We're all figuring out what to do and not to do. Uh, we, we landed on, for instance, one of the things in terms of using a Scrum method is to estimate your work. And we landed on, they didn't like ours, so we ended on estimating everything in t-shirt size, which they really liked. So, so that's what we use. Um, but it's an ongoing process, just like the tool itself sort of supports an ongoing iterative development. We see the tool usage the same way. We want to iterate and make it better every time we use it. Kind of thing. Um, so that's a little bit on our methods. Um, as part of a key part of our method that we started to evolve last year is more towards DevOps as well, which is to, well, a portion of DevOps. We are starting to do continuous integration, which is uh, a, a method where you it automate a portion of, of your software development process, if you will. And um, we, we have now set up, so we, we check out, or check in all our code into GitHub. Uh, I don't know if you guys use GitHub. Um, we started to use it, so we introduced it to the city uh, a few years back. And um, we, we have a, soft, a tool that every time that the developer is done with a task, check in their code, the tool picks up the code, builds it, checks it, runs a bunch of analytics on it to make sure that it's good code, um, and then runs a number of automated tests against it to make sure that a, the quality is there. So as part of the process, you've got to build tests at the same time as you're building the code to fulfill the specific API that we're working on. So that is a, that's a, a, a very important piece for me because we, initially when we started launching our APIs, it worked really, really well, but then we realized that our testing tool is not in any way covering really what we need to cover, so we ran into quality issues, and CI for us is the way that we want to build in quality into our product. That, plus we get the benefit of, of having automation to our tests, which means that we don't actually have to ask our business to go back and test it again and again and again every time we change something. So continuous integration is really important for us. Now the next stage of that that we're still trying to figure out is how we're gonna do then automatic, what's called automatic provisioning and automatic deployment, which is that we wanna build cloud environments directly with every build and then put the software on there and test it on there too. And that is a way of kind of making sure that the way that the software was coded and the, and the infrastructure that servers were defined will work in production too. So that's our, the next stage that we're working on. So CI is really important for us um, in terms of a method. So that's sort of what I thought I would cover in terms of methods. Any questions on, on all that? I, kind of, I felt like I flew through it. Yes? Most teams do not use this. Yeah, so we're kind of introducing it to, to the environment. I, I'll say that with a qualifier because I don't know if any, all the other teams are actually highlighting it. So it may very well be other teams like children's services or somewhere else 
where they're actually using it. Uh, Jira is another tool that's quite popular in the city, and there's uh, development teams, and I know that uh, some of those teams are, are using it, so we can add on that. So, so I, I don't know 100% for sure, but we're trying to not be stringent about it, but we want to try it full blown. Like, we didn't want it to do it like half fast, so when we started to utilize it, we let's say, let's do the full way, like, let's forget about what we did yesterday, and then just try it the way that it's described in sort of best practice. Go ahead. How big is your team? Uh, I have 27 staff. Good size. Yeah. Sorry, I, I really forgot that I, I didn't uh, repeat the question. So this time I will. Uh, so your so the question was if there's interest from other teams, right, uh, to adopt this as well. There definitely is an interest. Um, I think part of of uh, the next stages of this would really be to try to figure out how we go as a whole organization towards say DevOps, because DevOps is we're we're just like every other organization starting to do a lot more cloud and it sort of would make more sense for us to use more of a DevOps model as we get into that. And um, so th there's definitely an interest, a lot of discussions, a lot of people that are, are sort of trying to pick up on various techniques. And what I've observed is, is that a lot of those individual teams are starting to pick up on their specific pieces in DevOps and, and learning that. But what we haven't do, done necessarily super effectively is to tie all of that together in the entire DevOps. There's a lot more opportunity, that's for sure. Yeah. Good time for maybe one more question. All right. Um, yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when you're when you're using process, do you use them from proof of concept stages or only once it becomes a, a major project for your team? Like if you just have to do a demo and what are the timelines and this sort of stuff, do you, do you just jump right into the DevOps practices and starting up uh, a new stream or do you uh, let people be their own little we do, we, uh, yeah, okay, exactly. Um, so the question was if we, how we do this uh, in POCs or just in the larger projects. I would say that we use more of this in the larger projects and POCs are ongoing. I didn't even mention that, but we do a lot of POCs and we formalize that, we talk about it, we value it after, not like writing down you know, a 50 page document about it, but there's a lot of discussions internally in the team on the POCs that are ongoing and we support POCs, we make sure that the right people are there and, and there's a sort of a facilitated POCs. So right now there's a POC happening for um, creating um, Avro files and pushing into AWS uh, as a POC to see how we could use that for say open data or something else. You might tell the camera what the POC is. Yeah. Sure, so POC proof of concept as a way of proving an approach, a method, a technology, yeah. All right. That was all the questions. One more question or no more questions? Okay, one more question, and then after that, there'll be plenty of time to chat during the break. Uh, the, like the what you guys are working on is this like a board that could be bubble for folks who I, I don't know care follow understand or see what's coming down possibly coming down the pipeline? What you guys are working on? Um, yeah, I I don't see why not. These are basically the work work in progress, if you will, that we have internally for our team, but. I can share some of it if there's some interest. We are involved in a number of different capital projects, so we have pieces of it, and that's kind of what you see up here. Yeah. I can share that. All right. 
Can I have just do one more step before the next part of the section? Sure. Uh, one minute, I sure. promise. So one of the things I wanted to bring to this team and I was hoping that, that maybe someone would be interested in chatting about is the opportunity of, of extending what, how city services are delivered. So I imagine that if we were offering up a standard, all of our processes through APIs in government, um, we would suddenly be able to have a far more uh, uh, stronger interplay with community organizations, with companies, with other governments in automating integrations and services uh, in a more effective way. So today there's there you know there's lots of organization interacting with the city and it happens largely through paper or kind of like an online form where you have to do something. But I imagine that there were, there's lots of opportunity and ideas in your heads about what you could do a little more effectively with the city. Now we've started to do more and more of the data, and that's good that providing the data out, but I'm really keen to understand if you have something in mind or, or you could see that it would be value in actually having transactional services available to other uh, to other organizations and uh, for uh, private citizens. So that's sort of I, as I have as a, as a next step for the, for, for the night. All right. So I'm going to stick around if anyone wants to chat. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Omar. And I know there were some people who had some other questions. I'm sorry to cut them off, but uh, there will be time during.